We are here again, and a few more stories about pins on my hat. I may go into a little more of the story about some of these. These two little wooden pins that are right here, I think I showed you last time, they're musical notes, but they're special musical notes. They're shaped notes, buckwheat notes they were called. One is actually a rectangle, and the other one is a diamond. It's, um, it's a square, but it's up on point, so it's like a diamond. And they're called Fossola people. Uh, Shakespeare called them the Fossola folks. And someone came up with a geometric shape, a square, a circle, um, a diamond, different kind of a shape, half moon, so that it was tablature for the voice. And this goes back to way, way back several centuries ago. And it was people's efforts who didn't know anything about music. How were they going to know where to put their voice? Where, where were they going to put the pitch? So it's tablature for the voice. And for a while, they just put them straight out on a straight line. And then they realized if they put them on lines and spaces, a staff going up and down, that would help people know when to go up and down at least. It still didn't tell them the pitch. The shape told them the pitch. Fa, so, la, mi, do. And they're called the Fasola people. Uh, do, re, mi, uh, they added three shapes, making it seven at a given point after about a hundred years. But there's still groups of people that sing just the four. Fa, so, la, fa, so, la, mi, fa. And there is another pen that I have here that is very, very special to me because one of my very special friends had these pens made up. And it says, time spent singing is not deducted from your life. And those of us that love this singing, this is an old American tradition. It really is the white man's music. The black people that came in were the rhythm of the world, but the Welsh people were the singers of the world. And the very Celtic, uh, a certain amount of this, goes back to bagpipes and the pentatonic scale. And the old folk, folk modes. Uh, we sing in keys of convenience. We don't look at a key signature. Uh, we're not the better music boys. We're lay people, all getting together, community singing. It's a doer's singing. It is not a viewer's. We don't go to be entertained or to watch. We go to participate. And one of the men that was very instrumental in saving this tradition after World War II, he said, I wouldn't walk across the street to listen, but I will walk a hundred miles to sing because it was the people making love to each other in this circle of singing. And it was the shared vibration of the voices and the love the people had for each other. And everybody had a chance to lead if they wanted to. So you sat in a square and you sang to each other. And it's just a special, special community singing thing. And in North Carolina, one of the last uh, singing conventions after World War II took place in Marion, North Carolina, where over 3,000 people gathered over a weekend, three or four days, to sing. And they sing all day for six hours, uh, usually from nine until three. And they break for dinner on the grounds. And they would have to leave, and around three or four o'clock, they'd have to leave and go home to milk. So they'd say, it's milking time, it's time to leave. Anyway, it was an old, old tradition that is still alive and well in America. It stemmed from the West Gallery singing of the British Isles and came over with the Pilgrims. Very special. Now, the Pooh Bear, I have two sons, and when they were little boys, one of our favorite, favorite things was Winnie the Pooh. And so I have a Pooh Bear that is on my hat, and it's got a balloon, a little Pooh Bear, with his balloon, I read on a regular basis all of the Winnie the Pooh stories to them when they were little boys. So this is very special to me. Now off and on throughout my life, I have had a certain amount of weight problem. I would go up and down. And my Uncle Carrie, at one point when I had gained some weight and was no longer skinny, I considered myself fat. I told him I just was afraid to even come and see him because I'd gained so much weight. And he said, well, he said, I think you like your own cooking too well. And that may be the truth. But he also had an awful lot of just common sense. And he had a Montgomery County twang when he talked. And he said to me, Sharon, he said, 
you just come on down and see me. He said, I said, oh, I'm just too fat. I think I need to wait until I lose some weight. Oh, he said, don't worry about it. He said, you know, Sharon, he said, as we get older, he said, we either get skinny or we get fat. And I thought on that and decided I didn't know why I was making such a fuss about it. That's right. We get skinny or we get fat. It was similar to my adopted granddaddy when I couldn't get on the horse in Woolwine, Virginia, out there in the country. I'd have to, too short. The horse was big. And so I would have to get uphill. And sometimes I would have to turn the horse around or I would actually have to mount on the wrong side because I would have to be uphill to be able to reach the stirrup to get on. And just fuss and fuss and fuss about I wasn't tall enough. I wasn't tall enough. I needed to grow. And he said, well, he said, you don't need to grow. He said, you don't worry about it. He said, you know, your, your feet touch the ground like everybody else's. And I used to think on that once in a while and think, yes, why am I making such a stink about uh, being short or not being short? My feet touch the ground like everybody else's. So some of that common sense did rub off. And I had, but I was, I had a weight problem at times and was concerned about it. So I have a Weight Watchers pen. I actually stayed long enough to obtain my Weight Watchers life pen so I could go to the meetings as long as I stayed within a few pounds of what my goal weight was. I could go and go free. So there's my Weight Watcher pen. Now, in North Carolina, there is a very special folk school called Brass, J. C. Campbell Folk School, uh, Brasstown. It's it's or it's located in Cherokee County, down at the very kind of uh, southwestern corner of the state, in the hills, in the mountains. It was created turn of the century and based on a Danish model of folk school. There are workshops that continue all year long, and it's just magical, magical, magical place to go. And I went a number of times and attended different workshops there and was very taken with the fact that they are really singers, and they love the singing there. And this is their symbol, the horse and the plow. And that's a man plowing behind a horse, and it the song... The philosophy of the school is I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. I sing behind the plow. And I assure you, my adopted granddaddy, always, he, he never drove a car. He plowed with a horse uh, uh, and rode horseback, delivered mail on horseback at one time. And But he was a singer. And he always did sing. In fact, when it got time for us to have to come in in the evening, he didn't just go out and holler and yell for us to come in. It was getting dark. He sang us in. And he actually sang us in to one of the old shape note songs. One of the magical things about the shape note music is everybody had a special tune. They had a beautiful tune all to themselves. And those tunes just crisscrossed with each other and happen to make harmony once in a while. So that when you went out to plow or to pick peas, you could sing your part and it was just as pretty as the lead tune. He was a bass and so he sang bass and it was a gorgeous melody even though it fit in and became a little harmony once in a while with the other parts. And I can always, when I'm singing the shape note songs, when we get to Twilight is Stealing or Twilight is Falling, I can always hear him on bass. And when he called us in, in the evening, it began to get dark, and the voice would carry. People yodeled at one time, and you could hear, and it was quiet. You, the sound would echo through the hills. And he would sing us in by saying, Twilight is stealing over the sea. And he would start in his bass voice, and he would sing us in. Sweet happy home of mine. It was a mansion to him. The song even says it was a mansion. And certainly his home was meager. It wasn't, it was a mansion to him though. And it was a beautiful old farmhouse. But it was old and no central heat. We didn't have a telephone. Um, he had a little bit of radio that he got for the farm news in the morning. 
But that was about it. Metal roof, beautiful old house. And we'd take a soapstone to bed at night and wrap it in newspaper to keep our feet warm in the feather bed. And we had a chamber pot upstairs. You didn't, you didn't leave the bedroom to go to the bathroom. You had your chamber pot right there. And so that's how I grew up, and I thought the whole world grew up that way. Never occurred to me until I hit the outside world in the ninth grade that there was anything any different than that military boarding school in Woolwine, Virginia, out in the country. And uh, it was a, a very special way of growing up. I was free, and children were just turned loose uh, because they, they were safe. So this, these are the pens, most of them having to do with music, many, many of them having to do with music on my Where Who Have. And thank you for listening again, and I will continue with a few more stories, a few more pens on my hat in our next meeting.